Hey everybody, my name is Ashley Rush and I'm an independent creative memories advisor located in North Carolina. It's been a while since I've seen you guys. I'm sorry that I ended up taking last week off, but the state fair, it was calling my name, all of that deep fried food and those carnival rides. I just, I couldn't resist. And I went ahead and just took the whole day off, spent it with my family and it really was amazing. So this week I am back with an extra special video and here's a little bit of like Hollywood movie magic uh, secret for you. Generally, when I am recording this intro to the video, I've actually already completed the project. I know how it turns out and um, yeah, any of the ooing and aahing and guessing I'm doing is it's acting, it's artifice. But this week, this video, I'm starting from scratch. So I'm doing my intro actually first. I don't know what I'm creating. I don't know how this video turns out. So here's hoping it's great. I will be introducing to you guys the brand new tool by Creative Memories. This is the envelope and um, bow creator. I almost said card creator. Gosh, Ashley, get the name of the product correct. <coughs> this is the envelope and bow creator by Creative Memories. As the name suggests, this tool helps you create your very own envelopes and your very own bows. Do you have to be a card maker to use this? No, absolutely not. I hope to be able to mention some different ways to use it throughout the video. And then maybe over the next couple weeks to months, I'll be using this in a couple of different ways so that you can have ideas on how to use this with your scrapbooking. I hope this video turns out well, because remember, I still haven't done the project yet, and I hope you guys enjoy. This video is going to be all about the envelope and bow creator by Creative Memories. I'm going to demonstrate how to use both the envelope creating side and the bow creating side. And I'll be using the five by seven envelope and card kit featuring the party time designs to help illustrate some of those creations. So you'll need your tool, you'll need the party kit or some extra paper and embellishment lying around, and then you'll need a traditional tape runner. So through a bit of movie magic, I've already opened my bow and envelope creator. So you'll see that um, really all of the directions, everything you need is printed right on the tool itself. We've got some measurement guides for our envelopes. We've got measurement guides for our bows. We've got our notch and corner punches. And then we've got some fold out arms here that help extend the reach of our envelope maker. So first let's go ahead and decode all of these numbers. So we're gonna do envelopes first. I feel like envelopes are actually way easier to make than the bows. So we've got this chart here and it's divided into three different columns. You've got card size, paper size, punch guide. So card size, that's pretty obvious. That is the size card you're working with. So for example, a four by six card or a five by seven card. We start at two by three and a half and we go all the way up to six by eight and a half. So we've got lots of different sizes here. The next number in the columns is your paper size. Now you'll be wondering, why is there only one number here? So for example, five, that's the first number listed. That is because the papers you'll be working with are squares. So if you are making a envelope for a two by three and a half inch size card, you're going to need a five by five inch square piece of paper to make your envelope. Then the last number is your punch guide. This says two. We're going to show you what that means here in just a second. My party time kit is made for five by seven cards. So my papers are already pre-cut. So if I am creating a five by seven card, I will find that in my, um, in my chart. So I have it here. My paper needs to be nine and five eighths inches square. 
and I have that from our kit. Now that third number says four and an eighth. That is where you are going to measure your um, card to create all of your um, scoring lines and your punches. So let me demonstrate. Hiding in the corner here of your tool, we actually have a scoring tool, an embossing tool. Now I'm going to take my piece of paper and I'm gonna line it up on this diagonal measurements. Again, I am looking for four and an eighth. So I've got four here. I go over one more notch to make it four and an eighth. I've got both of my um, scoring arms extended and I am just going to score along side A and side B. All right, I'm now gonna flip it to the opposite corner. And again, I'm gonna line up at four and an eighth and score once again at line A and line B. Now I think you guys can see that if I hold this at just the right angle, maybe it'll be better on the plain side. Yes, there we are. You can see where I have now scored my rectangle out. Now do you guys also see where there's almost like this X marks the spot? That is where we are going to um, make little notches in our paper in order to get great and easy folds. Now our notch punch is built straight into our bow and envelope creator. And you'll see that there are a couple of different places um, that'll help you line up. So there is a notch in the middle that will give you the center line. And there are these two little arms or legs that'll help you line up with the creases. So I'm gonna hold this up so you guys can see. When I've got this in the right place, my scoring lines are gonna fit in between or line up nicely with these little arms or legs. And then the center line marks the very middle of that line. So I'm just gonna punch that out. I'm gonna rotate to my next notch. So again, I'm just lining up, putting those crease marks along the arms. I've done all four of my notches. Now something you, that you might notice with envelopes is that they often have the corners rounded of all of their, um, their edges. Now you could, if you prefer nice sharp edges, you don't have to round the corners, but if you would like to round them, we have a corner rounder also built into this tool. So literally everything you need is right here. Now it's just time to fold. You need to decide what you want on the outside or the inside of your card. Sometimes it's fun to have a plain outside with a punch of color on the inside. Um, I think that's how I'm gonna go with traditional envelopes. The sides are folded in first. Now I'm using um, some basic designer paper. It's thin enough to fold easily, but we also have a brand new bone folder you can use if you're using thicker paper. So as you can see, I do my sides first and then my bottom. You could also choose to do a sort of top loading envelope and have the everything loaded in that way. I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna take my um, tape runner and the trick is to put tape runner on just the sides, these short sides. 
Okay. Oh, I got a little excited there. And then I just fold the bottom up. So now when I create my card, I slide it in. You could then choose to use some tape runner on the outside or seal with a sticker. Or if you're like me, I usually just tuck that top into the envelope itself so someone can reuse it. Now, how simple was this envelope? I for sure thought this was gonna be super tricky. I was very scared of this tool, but I, <laughs> I am a changed person. So here is the five by seven. I also did a really cute um, envelope for a, let's see, I think this would fit like a three by five and a half or maybe three by five and a quarter. Um, I used a decorative edge on the outside here, but still a pop of color on the inside. I love that look. I can go ahead and tuck this in like I said. Now, if you are not a card maker, why would you want envelopes? Well, envelopes are perfect little addition to our scrapbooking pages. I can see this added onto a page, tucking different notes for journaling inside, journaling that you maybe wanna keep private, but you wanna be able to remember and have access to later on. I could see embellishments popping out of here or photos popping out of here. I think that'll be something I can illustrate um, on a later video doing different page ideas um, and it'll be a lot of fun. Now let's get to the bow creator. Much like our envelope maker, our bow creator also comes with a chart with all of the sizes you need. And it has um, four different uh, columns. Now when you're making bows, you're going to need three different pieces and all of those sizes are listed here. So the first thing you will see is a size chart. So this makes one, two, three, four, five, six different sized bows. And then they use different width papers. So depending on what size bow you want, you will choose the width that corresponds with it. And then you will need um, three additional pieces of paper in the designated length. So they'll all be the same width, but different lengths. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. Let's make the super big bow because I feel like that'll be fun. I will need my trimmer. And I've pulled out a piece of back to school paper just because I thought it would fun be fun. So we need a piece of paper that is one and a half inches. So it needs to be one and a half inches wide. So I will actually need um, probably two of those. All right. So I've now done the length for the double XL bow and they're one and a half inches wide. So now piece A needs to be 10 inches long. Let's see, I don't need to open that, I can do math. So if I take two inches off. All right, so I've got piece A, which is 10 inches long. Now I will need piece B, which is five and a quarter inches long. This piece is pretty much extra. And you'll need a piece that is three eighths, I think. Let me see. Yes, three eighths inch long. All right, so I've got piece A, piece B, and piece C. Then you are finished with your trimmer. PC, you don't need to do anything to. It's all done and ready. So I'm just gonna set that piece aside. 
Now piece A and piece B, you're gonna need to do some notching too. So the first thing we're gonna do is take piece A and we're gonna lightly fold it in half. We're not making a crease here, but we do want the corners to match up and we do wanna vaguely know where the middle is. So it's not like a hard crease, but there's a definite bend. All right, so now I'm gonna make my tails and I'm going to um, take my corners here that are matched up and I'm going to put the top part of the corner into my notch punch. And I'm going to take it till it meets about halfway and then I'm going to punch. And then I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side. Again, making sure the corners are lined up bring it to that halfway mark, and you punch. If you ever forget what you need to do, it's illustrated right here on the, um, on the creator. Now you're going to unfold it, and remember you've got that uh, nice little easy crease there, not too permanent. Now you're going to put a notch there. And you're just going to line up that easy crease with the middle part of the notch punch. And you're going to do both sides. Now piece A is done. You're going to do sort of the similar thing with piece B. Folding so that the corners meet giving it a light fold in the middle. This time though, instead of starting from the middle and the edges, you're actually gonna turn it on its side and you're going to send those flat edges into the notch punch, doing your best to eyeball it and get that centered. So that looks like centered to me. Doesn't have to be perfect guys. We're Homemade is super cute. I did move it there at the last second, so it looks a little wonky. I could try and repunch it a bit. Yeah, that just evened it out. And then I'm opening it up and I'm putting that middle point into my notch maker again. So now you have to decide what you want to be your tails, like that little bit, that point that comes out of your bow and what you want to be the actual fluffy part of the bow. So I'm going to try it both ways. Do we like it with stars and then stripes underneath? Or stripes with stars underneath. You know what? Let's just go loud. We're gonna do um, <laughs> stars underneath, stripes on top. So the first thing you're going to do is you're gonna add a little bit of adhesive right to the middle here. And whichever pattern you're wanting to be face up is actually going to be down on your tabletop. And you're gonna fold the sides into the middle they don't have to come exactly to the middle. What you're trying to do is actually just line up your edges. So you can see how you can no longer see the yellow underneath. And we're gonna do the same on this side. So like if I tried to go exactly to the middle, you can see the yellow underneath. You just want to hide that yellow, get it exactly to the middle. Isn't that cute? Now you are going to adhere your bow to your tail. And last but not least, you're going to take that piece C and you're going to adhere that to the middle of your bow and that'll hide any seams from where the loops meet. So I'm just gonna cover up that seam here. And 
then fold over the edges. And you have this cute, darling little bow. So this will look great on like cards and packages. You guys don't have to go to the store anymore to buy any bows for your Christmas presents and birthday presents. These are also going to look super cute added to your page decor. Now, if it's something that you're putting on a page, you can kind of flatten this out a little bit. But if you are putting it on a present, you can fluff it up a little bit. Um, it's, it's very flexible because it's paper and it's going to hold its shape a little better. How darling is that? How easy was that, guys? I, I, I think I said this earlier, I was scared of this tool. I thought it was going to be so hard to use. I never thought I would remember any of the measurements. I was like, oh, why creative memories? Why? But I'm actually really excited. I'm excited to use up old paper. Like guys, I wish you could kind of see, I have like bins of old creative memories paper here that I'm like, oh, I can't just throw it away. I don't want to use it. Now I can see making fun envelopes and ribbons and bows and all sorts of really cool things for um, projects around the house, seasonal decor. While making this, I had a super fun idea for some seasonal decor that I think I'm gonna use in another video. What do you guys see yourself using this tool for? Are you guys going to be envelope makers or bow makers? I heard um, another advisor say that she actually sold one of these tools to her digital customer because her digital her because her digital customer was going to be using up all of her old supplies that she no longer uses and getting more bang for her buck and not wasting so um i she was gonna mostly be making bows for wrapping presents and things i am excited to see what you guys think you'd want to use it for which side of the tool do you want me to use for a future video? Do you want to see more bow videos using them in your scrapbook pages? Or do you want to see more envelope videos using those in your scrapbook pages? I'm open to anything. You guys can either comment here or you can reach out to me on my Facebook or Instagram. I'm posting daily content there and it's the easiest way to reach me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you guys should also check out my personal website. It is where I'm posting my events. I hold in-person and virtual events, so there's something out there for everybody. I know I've been promising, promising, promising you guys some new events, but I'm trying to wrap up some old events that got postponed because of the hurricane, so I don't want to announce new ones until I've taken care of old ones. Um, <laughs> so sorry about that. And then if there's anything in this video that you just love and you've got to have it, please check out my Creative Memories website. It is where you go for all your scrapbooking and crafting needs. Um, and I, it's also where you go to join my team. I am really focusing on growth this year and I would love to have you join my team and grow alongside me. Shoot me a message if this is something you think you might be interested in. All right, guys, I think that is it for me this week. I look forward to seeing you guys all next week and I'll talk to you later. Bye.